up YouTube? Welcome to my channel. My name is Tatiana Kim. I'm writer director and this video is the only video you'll need to get your green card without the work. I'm not kidding because we spent almost a year <laughs> recording and editing it and it's only now the time that we are actually releasing this video because we couldn't just hold it to ourselves because a lot of people helped us to get our green card without lawyers so we really just wanted to pay forward and kind of get this information to someone who needs it maybe it's you this video is very long and it's packed with information about how we got it how exactly we got it what forms and what is the process and just all the little details so i really suggest you take your notes but it's actually not that hard to get your green card artist green card not just any green card it's an extraordinary ability green card me and my husband were an artist so it was a big deal for us to get it and save ten thousand dollars all right on to part one hey guys hello my name is tatiana my name is anatoly and we're an artistic couple from kazakhstan kazakhstan and we are here today to tell you how we got our green cards without lawyers. How we got our green cards without lawyers as a family unit, because uh, we couldn't find a lot of information about how to get it as a family unit. Obviously, how to get it without lawyers. It's really hard to find those as well. Just a little disclaimer. We are doing this video in English just to kind of reach the broader audience. And I'm guessing if you want to be here in America, you already know English and you already speak. And so hopefully you understand everything that we're saying. Um, that is the reason why we decided to make this video in English, not in our native language, which is, which is Russian. We are doing this video uh, and we applied as artists. Uh, so we're doing from the artist's point of view, from the artist's perspective. Um, Tatiana is a director, new media producer. I'm pursuing a career in I acting. To to and I need to talk to her. Position and Another writer, door. And then we produce as a, as a team, as a Light. couple, we produce all our projects together. So we have uh, a small production company here in Los Angeles uh, that, uh, that we kind of operate uh, from Los Angeles, but working globally. This video is for artists like ourselves, artists who are working on different mediums and artists who are cosmopolitans. That's very important. We feel that artists sometimes need a break and and need a help that's how we felt when we were in the process of applying so we are doing this as a pay forward thing because a lot of people helped us on the way the visa process is daunting it's very hard it's it's just uh, you don't know how to to start even sometimes so hopefully this video will help those who want to live six months here and six months somewhere else like us because we travel a lot and this will help them to understand how they can just be legal here, work legally here, and uh, do not struggle with identity and belonging. You might still struggle with your identity, even if you oh, have a green true. card. Oh, this is, it's not a legal this advice. This is not a legal advice. This is what we did. This is what worked for us. We did a lot of research. We received multiple visas before that, working visas artistic visas before that so we were very confident in our abilities to apply ourselves uh, we're not telling that everyone should leave their country we're here to tell you that if you're an artist and want to expand your work and work here in the united states and work someone else how we do it um, then green card obviously is a good choice for you um, to apply for it doesn't mean that you're leaving your country or just like anything like that it means that you are cosmopolitan that you are expanding your your artistic endeavors but i hope this will help you to make a decision do you need a uh, lawyer do you need a help or you can just do it yourself if you are ready and actually green card is also a visa but they call it an immigrant visa uh, all other visas are non-immigrant visas so for example when you um, apply for a tourist visa to just you know come here for six months and uh, you know travel it's called a non-immigrant visa another type of non-immigrant visa is artistic visa well they also call it the visa of talent the talent visa it also applies to scientists it also applies to to people in sports 
and uh, and to artists. So we our journey started when we finished uh, college here in the United States. It started with applying for an OPT, which is an extension of sort of your um, student visa, but with which you can work in the field that you receive the major in. Now we're here talking about uh, an immigrant visa, which is also a green card. And when people say the word green card, a lot of um, confusion comes from... Uh, lottery. L lottery. People think of, oh, lottery. I have to like play the lottery. The lottery is its own thing. It usually happens in the fall. I think it's already passed. Yeah. The green card, the artistic green card, or also the scientist green card, or the sport green card, uh, it's called EB1. And EB1 green card... You can apply anytime. And you actually can apply from anywhere. EB1A, it does not need a petitioner. Basically, you can be your own petitioner. Where in other cases, EB2, EB3, you have to have a petitioner. You have to have a company um, that will petition for you, uh, meaning that they, they're sponsoring you in providing the job at their company. And that's why you're get, they're applying for a green card for you. EB1A, the artist mm -hmm. green card, sport people, um, and scientists, is basically you're applying for yourself. You have the right. You can also have a petitioner, but you can petition for yourself, fill everything out for yourself, and then send it and get the green card. Be your own petitioner. 2012, we applied for colleges here in the United States, had our own F1 visas because we went to uh, different, to different colleges, different schools, uh, had our own degrees. Uh, so that lasts for uh, the last for three years. Step number two, OPT, which is, I don't even know what it stands for. It's a period. Right. You can, for only one month, for three months, or for one year, right. if you're a degree like ours, mm -hmm. and scientists get, I think, three years. Scientists then get, yeah. get three years. Artists get one year. One year. They get OPT. one year of applying when the school ends, usually within the, the last, I think, two or three months you can apply, or the after two or three months of uh, the school uh, last day, you can apply for OPT. We spent one year preparing to apply for O1. And O1 is an artistic visa, which requires a petitioner. A petitioner is a person for whom you can work. And this is the only person or the only company you can work for. We, as an artist, we work on different projects and we really wanted to be able to just be hired by anyone because we couldn't be hired by anyone because they saw that we have a one visa and for them to hire us, it would require us to have green card. I think it's also important to say that you cannot be here without a status in the United States and apply yeah. for something. Yeah. So everything that happens, you have to Don't have a that. very strict timeline. So for example, when you apply for uh, for a visa or a green card, um, you can be here even though you don't have the answer, but you can legally be here. You cannot work though, but you can legally be present in the United States. One advice for O1 is it is very time sensitive. Most probably you're applying for O1 after school. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Some people mm, apply some people from apply. from true. overseas. Yeah, some, that's true. Yeah, but it's kind of limiting and very time sensitive, and it's only for three years, and you need at least six months to one year to prepare for it. In most cases, in cases like ours, when you have a lot of body of work, when you have a lot of work, and your body of work is sufficient, but it's international, for instance, with no major like Oscars or cans no major festivals then you have to gather everything after first oh one yeah we wanted to apply for eb1 for for the green card for the green card but we couldn't because our time again mm -hmm. wasn't right and the politics change is something like that i don't even remember why oh trump came trump came i'm like i'm <laughs> totally forgot trump came and he changed so much he changed policies and we couldn't apply anymore for a green card within that time period. That's why we had to apply again, not, not even extend a one, but mm -hmm. apply again. I think, uh, if I remember correctly from our lawyers, you can extend it only by one year if you're working on the same project. Because for a one, you have to show the project, projects that you're going to be working uh, on. Um, 
Yeah. And that's the main difference between O1 and EB1. For EB1, you don't have to show projects or petitioner. Um, for, for O1, you do. And then you can extend by one year if you're working on the project. Otherwise, you have to reapply for O1 for the same visa again. And that process, you know, logically, you would say, well, if I was granted O1 once, I can be granted the second time. They just need to see that I'm working, that I keep working on, on different projects. That's not the case, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you have to reapply, start from the scratch, even though you're applying the same case, um, might be, might even be with the same petitioner, might be with uh, the, you know, you know, new projects, and you still have to prove to that officer that you are worth it. Because it's a different officer. It's not the same officer that uh, received your case with the first O1. So it is again selling that you're worth it to another person. So think about it. How would you package and market your case to get it? It's all the time it's a different person. We applied for another set, another O1, mm -hmm. which took us one year to receive. That's why when you see a person like 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 us and they say, Oh, we're here for nine years. Yes, it sounds it nine years, but then but then you realize why it takes so long to get all this when you do it properly like us because we are we just want everything to be done correctly yeah mm -hmm. that's that's how we do work this is just our mentality so we couldn't jump anywhere and do uh, apply for other reasons so we had to stick with the process which i'm very proud of that we did that and mm -hmm. and, and i hope you as an artist can do the same uh, with just a little bit of help and research as an actor, of course, you live in Los Angeles and you're trying to prove that you are like super extraordinary ability actor from Kazakhstan. That's why it's harder for actors to prove if you don't have a major, major either box office success or role. I applied as a producer. That's why for me, with all my body work, it was much easier. So I essentially got no RFEs. They just asked for the letter from Producers Guild that can verify that I did work here and they just verified it that I had this project and this project and it was it for me it was like done because yeah. every artist has their own opera 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 what a sexy word yeah well if it makes you feel better and if you're a bad student we did wait last minute to apply for our second O1 just because we were so tired for applying for first O1 and we were like, okay, everything is ready. So we're just going to wait and wait and wait. And then we applied, but we don't recommend it. That is why we applied for our green card two years before our O1 would be expired. Because usually green card takes about one year, sometimes two years, sometimes even more to get the result. So for us, it just wasn't um, logical to apply last minute and we applied in 2021 even though our O1s are expiring in 2022 but another reason is because we wanted to save money and we did save at least ten thousand dollars by applying. 10 to 12 K yeah we still paid around five thousand for all the forms expedites and everything but it's still ten thousand less than it would have been with a lawyer two stages of applying the mm -hmm. first one is the case itself the evidence there are 10 listed criteria that are the evidence of you being extraordinary for example if you apply for six criteria and the officer who received your case only considers that it's two that you really are good in two then you don't pass because you need three at least three. At least three, yes. So make sure to apply for, I don't know, eight. <laughs> <laughs> or make sure you apply for six and you know that four of them are very strong. Right. There's also, you know, the website says that you can apply for one if it's, again, what Tatiana said before, Nobel if it's Prize. international. It's like yeah. Nobel Prize, Grammys, Oscars, you know, major, major stuff. Uh, but if not, then you can apply for three at least and match, pass, and then... Get the green card. Yeah, you can find all this information on uscis.gov. And it is actually a very useful resource, I guess. Mm -hmm. We did check everything there and it's a lot of work, but 
it is a well-made, organized website that can actually help you because people are there, even the officers with whom we spoke, they're very helpful, I think. So that's the first step. Look into your categories and decide which categories you are going to be investing your time in, which categories truly reflect your work, your body of work. Is that a press coverage? You have a lot of press coverage on you, on your projects. Is that a lot of credits with uh, like collaborations with international mm -hmm. international artists? artists? Are you are you credited? For example, if you're uh, you know if you're an artist and you're doing an exhibition somewhere remotely online, you know after 2020 there are so many things that are happening online. If someone's uh, you know showing <clears throat> your artwork at an online conference or exhibition somewhere in Dubai or or Brazil, are you credited properly? What's written there? Because all that matters. Everything, everything that is where you're mentioned and when you participate, yeah. where you participate matters. I think tip for anyone who is still planning, are they going to apply or not? Maybe not this year, maybe next year, maybe in three years. The things that we did not do while we were uh, back in our homeland and even here, we never credited ourselves for any work because we were just raised like that. Oh, it's okay. Sure. Yeah, I can do this, this. Do not do that. Credit yourself. At least if it's not a credit on the screen, put it down in the description so you can prove or ask them, the people with whom you're collaborating, to credit you. It is very important because every work going to count. Every mention of your name is going to count as past. Also, I think just from, from the acting point of view, uh, whenever I was booked on a role that said, you know, like a waiter or whatever, I would ask producers if I can actually have a name because obviously it gets more weight um, in the eyes of an officer because uncredited role or a role that with no name or a role with a name, obviously it's two different kind of um, tiers of, of work, I guess. So whenever you can, uh, just push for it, you know, ask for it and uh, and uh, credit yourself when it's due. Let's go. The f number one, the reading from the website, um, evidence of receipt of lesser national, nationally or internationally recognized prizes or awards for excellence. Lesser. Mark the word lesser. Lesser than Oscars. Lesser than Nobel Prizes. Mm -hmm. Any other local award will do the job if you have volume of it awards mm -hmm. that's how we apply because we had a bunch of different awards and we combined all those together right this so in one of the heaviest probably yeah the one that had like 200 pages long no actually i think press was the heaviest oh, but press. this was also uh, significant yeah. any you know all the film festivals that you you know that the film was selected and hopefully won um awards anything if it's not film it could be exhibitions yeah any awards that you got like for example for our one-man show auto Order, we got the uh, the award in edinburgh when we presented the show uh, for the best innovative show we have Which the actual a, it's award a big, it's a big award it's a big award it's a big award yeah so we were lucky to have bigger awards and smaller awards so we placed them in the case accordingly so person will see and kind of get all oh, they work in, on different levels with different kind of projects. Who do you apply as is very important um, as an actor, as an actor in film, actor in theater, or maybe as a voiceover artist uh, is very important. We decided that we we're going to apply for Tatiana because she has more awards, more uh, bigger names, more recognition. Thank you, Anatoly. This is my little award. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give this you an award. This is Naomi's award. Thank I'm you. I'm going to give you an award. So you got one more award. Congratulations. I got one more award. With me, because I can be more specific in multimedia environment that I work, mm -hmm. film, writing, producing, music, whatever, everything as an artist, I can be more specific in producing because it's more generic. But then what kind of producing? Right. So we could have picked up all, from all the works that we did together, we could pick and choose and say, oh, actually we can apply, I can apply as a new media producer because mm -hmm. of all the work that we've done as immersive theater, uh, HoloLens, uh, Microsoft, uh, Hackathon. Hackathon award, 
with all those little things that we're interested in and working on and collaborating mm -hmm. with other people, we said, okay, it's going to be a new media producer. The more specific you are, the better it is in the eyes of an officer. If you're applying, I'm a film producer. Well, okay, great. There is a lot of film producers uh, and uh, um, the, the competition is A, big, uh, B, it's, um, there is sort of the ceiling that you can get to just below the, you know, the Oscars and all the bigger awards. The ceiling up to that point is very, very high. If you are an artist and you have a very special technique, for yeah. example, you... Wooing with the wool, working with felt, yeah. or doing ornaments, or painting the windows, just... And you have a body of work of doing that, even though you're doing thousands of other things like us, what is one thing that you can combine and create that vision for the officer that, oh, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. He works in this medium and he's really good at that and it's very unique. Criteria number two, evidence of your membership in associations in the field which demand outstanding achievement of their members. So that could be being a member of, of a guild, right? For example, here there's Directors Guild, uh, Producers Guild, or or any other organization or maybe in your country or maybe there's something in your country that is uh you know like for example in kazakhstan i think there's the soyuz like again the guild of writers or something like that there's something that is um, obviously relatable to the stuff that you're applying with uh, so it couldn't be like you're an, a member of an, a writer's guild and you're applying as a director it doesn't make sense doesn't you make have to sense. be within one um within one stream consistency it should be consistent your case from page to page to page to category to everything and also we didn't apply for this because <laughs> we didn't we didn't have any memberships and we didn't have any membership in kazakhstan we don't even know what exists there so we just skipped that one but the next one mm -hmm. is what we applied evidence of published material about you in profession or major major trade publications or other major media and we so, got a lot of coverage. We got a lot of coverage from uh, probably last nine years, seven more, like yeah. seven, six years. Seven, six years. So how do you get a publications to write about you? In our case, it was two ways. Sometimes we applied ourselves with the press release. Sometimes people reached to us and wanted to, make, to get an interview from us. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have friends or you don't know how to get a publication, try to write your own release about your work and pitch it to different newspapers. You really have to be your own PR agency. For example, when we're applying for O1, we knew that, oh, well, we don't have enough of uh, evidence. We, we, I think we had some very like, not, 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 nothing significant, but whatever work we were doing, we decided that, okay, we're going to write a press release and we're going to send it to different uh, media outlets and whoever picks on this, great. Uh, we just, you know, that's that's what PR agency basically does. So you just have to be your own PR agency and reach out to media outlets, newspapers, online. The more the merrier and the bigger the better. Let's move on. It's uh, evidence that you have been asked to judge the work of others, either individually or on a panel. We didn't apply for this category, uh, but whenever you are, you have a chance when you're invited to a festival, to a panel, just to be a panelist is already a, a big thing. So, for example, um, I don't know, we did, it was after the fact, but we did this panel on uh, Kore Saram, the Koreans uh, who were born outside of Korea, to talk about the experience, about the uh, identity. Yeah, that could definitely be something that you uh, might consider. Uh, moving on, evidence of your or original scientific, scholarly, artistic, athletic, or business-related contributions. That's the one that we applied for, and that's basically the body of work that we had, and it it, it was a major part of the our case, which was, I don't know, like a thousand pages, 800 pages, I don't know, somewhere between 800 to 1,000 pages. As an artist, this is the biggest thing that you can apply, because basically you're showing what kind of artist you are here. Your, your actual work, you, obviously you cannot like send a DVD with your movie or uh, you know, an acting reel or paintings, nothing like that. Uh, I mean, you can, you can show, uh, you know, a picture, yeah, a you can pictures pictures of, 
of things that were happening, you cannot send them the actual work. But this is probably the major thing. I would say, like, probably without this, this criteria, you cannot apply for even yeah, work. Yeah, you're not considered work. to be an artist if you don't have work and you don't share it with the world. I guess that's that's the logic. <laughs> Show your work and do not be afraid and be proactive with that. That's how you're gonna get that body of work. That is how publications were gonna be interested in writing about you. That's how major festivals will will be interested in showing your work. So be proactive, do not be afraid and credit yourself. Evidence of your authorship of scholarly articles in professional or major trade publications or other major media. So that I don't think would apply for we this one. We did not apply no, we, yeah, we did not apply for this one because it's color art. So it's that's mostly for, for scientists, so stuff that you actually write yourself and then people publish it. If you're a scientist and you found out something about DNA and you wrote about it, that would be considered as part of this evidence. Right. But it's not about your work, just artistic work. It has to be about research, mm -hmm. about your research that you've done as a doctor, as a scientist, as a business owner just like right. yeah. so we didn't apply for this one because mm -hmm. we don't have any scholarly articles yet but we could because we're MFAs we could the next one is evidence that your work has been displayed at artistic exhibition and showcases this is the major one for us because mm -hmm. we tried to display our work small or big and that's important so we were raised in the country where the small things do not matter. When small achievements are so insignificant in the eyes of society, they're just not even worth it. So our mentality has changed dramatically. And so I'm here to tell you that every very small work that you do is very important. Because then when you apply for something like that, you'll see, oh my God, I've done so much. It's all the process of you getting wherever you want to be. So without that small work, none other work exists because that's the process. If you're an artist and you do the work, that counts. Even if it's small work, if it's only five people came to your show, sometimes it happened to us too. Our first show in Edinburgh was literally five critics. Five people were sitting in the room of a uh, hundred people. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. What matters is that you are there, that you are showing your work, that you're doing that work. Um, so go display, do the exhibitions, and that's how you're gonna get that 200 pages of your bravery. And also like, because of those five critics came on the very first day and uh, they wrote in the, the biggest, you know, magazines and newspapers, media outlets in Edinburgh during the festival, during the French, they wrote about it. Hey, we have this one more category with very big names like Scotsman, big newspaper for like 200 years or something like that, uh, 150 years. And then maybe because of that, you know, other people heard about us and then how that's how we got the award. So it's all like... That's how we got hired to go to Korea and Japan after to do another Edinburgh, show. To do another two show. Two other shows. Just because five people came to the show. We had 20, 26 or 27 shows, so more people came yeah. later. But the very first the day, first there was, day only like, was only five people. Yeah. But that was the most important day we ever <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill your inner critic. Evidence of your performance of a leading or critical role in distinguished organization. That one we had, just because of nature of our work. Uh, like for instance, I worked with the marketing department at my college, Art Center College of Design, which is a very famous college. Michael Bay, Zack Snyder graduated from that school. And as a filmmaker, I work doing, creating a content for them, video content for them for two years or so. So I gathered a lot of work. So I could show that, oh, I worked for Arts and Culture of Design that had this and this alums. It's such a great school. And I helped them to promote the school by creating videos for them. Mm -hmm. Or, for instance, Microsoft HoloLens Hackathon, which we won a special audio award, special mm -hmm. audio award, which is Microsoft, I mean. And we got letters from people who work in Microsoft that, yes, we were among the first one to try the Microsoft HoloLens. So that all counted. Evidence 
that you command a high salary and or, or other significantly high remuneration in relation to others in the field. We applied for this one. Salary in your country. But for instance, if you show like, oh, it's $2,000 and in US $2,000 is not a lot, but it's a lot in your country, so show them that. And then the last one is evidence of your commercial success in the performing arts. It could be box office. Oh, it's actually only box office. Box office, no, really. Well, the success could be obviously box office, but also like critics writing about it, uh, raving about it, people, views. You know, I, I know there's a lot of like social media personas that are applying for the same visa. So for example, you know, uh, for for the good or for the bad, uh, like followers matter. Views and followers, it's a m numeric value sometimes. Right. If you have like million views, maybe on your video and you're applying for this category, then it is a commercial success. Right. That's true. I think so. So yeah, put that into this category, commercial success in the performing arts. Put the shit in. Yeah, just do it already. So that's all for the categories, for the criteria. When you apply for your category, keep in mind that you have to prove from every direction, 360, that this criteria is your criteria. For instance, if you're applying as a display of showcasing your work first, you created a beautiful designed, beautiful felt slippers, you know that some celebrity wore them. So include her or his bio into that category. Also, if that celebrity wrote and tagged you on their Instagram post that got a million likes, Take a screenshot of that post and include it into that category. A lot of times your criteria and evidence that you're presenting, they will overlap. So you don't need to, to tell about the same artwork in the first criteria and then provide the same evidence. It's just a lot of, a lot of papers, a lot of like mm -hmm. wood waste. Uh, you don't have to do that. You just do one exhibit with that thing, with that show, and then you refer from the first evidence, you refer to the one exhibit about that specific show or artwork. If you're mentioned on any website as a newsletter, please include how many clicks this website had, how many people subscribed mm -hmm. to that um, newspaper, how mm -hmm. many people receive email from that newspaper. And you can find all this information in either media packages of that resource, media resource, or under FAQ sometimes. Here's a trick. You ask for a media kit or for a press kit. And usually a press kit is something that people send to clients, to brands and companies. And then in the press kit, they would have... They will tell, yes. Yeah, so yeah. many people are... So watching. many people are reading this or yeah. are clicking on this. Yeah. Like million clicks on, on our website. Mm -hmm. um, usually like female 35 65 or whatever like male blah 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 interest this and that you don't need all that um, information but you definitely need some numbers to mm -hmm. prove that and to show that this publication is actually you know it's a big deal so yeah. thanks for sticking to the end of this part one i hope it was helpful let me know in the comments below are you applying are you thinking to apply what is your process and just let's chat seriously i'm gonna answer everyone who's gonna comment under this video so please subscribe to my channel i am sharing here all the behind the scenes of the things that we're filming here in los angeles and just in general our life here in the second video we are covering all the forums and how you actually put the case together. Stick to the end. There's a bonus about two other forms that you can apply to and they're very helpful if you want to travel and work. All right, don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.